for DX Central Lloyd Van Horn here in the shack this afternoon doing a little review of IQ recordings from a sporadic E opening on the FM band back in May. And wanted to share a little tidbit. Uh, I've seen Bryce Foster and some other folks putting out some tip videos here on FM. Um, fantastic videos, by the way. Um, wanted to share an extra tip that I use for my FM DX that I hadn't seen anybody talk about. I um, just wanted to make sure I shared it as well. And that is the BF Spectrum. Um, here at SDR console. What is the BF Spectrum? Um, well, let me give you real quick the lay of the land here, what we're looking at within uh, console. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start up um, our stream here of our audio. Again, this is um, a sporadic E opening on May 31st here in Mandeville, Louisiana. Uh, what you're looking at here on the screen, you have the bottom half of our screen here, all these lines, these are signals. Each one of these signals is a radio station um, on a specific frequency. And you can see here the entire FM band. This is everything from 88.1 right here ish to 107.9. So you can actually see the entire FM band here with I'm my using my ELAD FDM S3 which gives me 24 megahertz of bandwidth at one time so I can record, watch, see the entire FM band at once. Um which is really really helpful for openings like this because I can live DX and kind of just kind of hit the high spot so I can get a sense of what the propagation was like at the time. Um, log those on FM list or the WTFDA logger, and then come back over after the fact, use that information that I gleamed during the live event to help me navigate and identify, okay, where do I expect to see things as the recording goes along and I'm reviewing each frequency individually. So I can try to get every single station that came in during that opening into my logbook. That's the goal. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, so yeah, again, the, the piece at the bottom here is the waterfall. This is kind of the historical timeline of everything that was received, um, dating back, I guess about, uh, what about 10 seconds, 15 seconds or so here on this particular case, you can see like the past 10, 15 seconds up here at the top, these little mountains and valleys, these, that's the actual live view the signals that are actually coming in live at that moment. Um, so you'll see here. It's going to continue to scroll that waterfall at the bottom and then those signals up at the top. So what this helps me do visually is identify how high is the MUF. If I'm the maximal usable, maximum usable frequency. So as that MUF starts here at the low end of the band and drives up, which I'm going to show you here in a second what it looks like when the MUF was real low, um, you'll actually see these signals fill in the band as it continues to drive up. So let me show you what it looked like at the beginning of the opening. Right? So you can actually see how it's really confined down here, the lower end of the band, the MUF is, maybe into the low end of the commercial portion of the band, which starts at 92.1. Most of the stuff up here at the top, these are all local signals or semi-local signals that I have inherent to my location. Um, but you can see all those little gaps, these darker gaps in between where there is not as strong signal or a signal at all. Um, later in the uh, opening, about uh, two hours later, that all gets filled in quite nicely. So you can actually see that change that occurred um, when you kind of look at it um, split like that between the original portion of the opening and the later portion of the opening. So let's talk about this BF spectrum. Um, so I'm gonna, first I'm gonna show you how to enable it. Go to receive tab up here in SDR console and under broadcast FM you have a little pull down menu and just click on spectrum. And what this basically does is it gives you a annotated slice of the FM signal that's being received on that frequency. Um, and it kind of maps out here for you where all the little elements are within that signal. So you'll see here where you would expect to see the mono signal within the mono portion of that signal on the, on the actual receive signal. Where's the pilot, the 19 kilohertz pilot signal that's coming in. Where is the stereo pair, uh, the, the, the stereo signal that's coming in the left and right stereo. And then this is the big one, the RDS. Um, I hear a lot of DXers, they'll say, I know the station has an RDS, but I'm not getting a decode. Why not? Um, there's a lot of factors that can go into that. Um, some stations, they crank their RDS signal way up, and so you barely need any portion of their signal to get that RDS decode. Some of them, it's a little bit weaker. It just depends. Some stations, you're going to be able to decode faster than others if they carry an RDS at all. Um, but um, during an opening, you'll know you'll have a lot of ambient noise and static that comes in. And it's going to sound a little bit like this. Let me actually give you a little bit of a taste of that. Right? So it's probably going to sound like that. 
And as you'll see when you have that, this RD or this uh, BF spectrum rather, um, it's just kind of a nice flat surface. There's nothing in here. You don't see any peaks. You don't see any little pops above this yellow area. That's just telling you what it's receiving is just the ambient static of the frequency, the ambient noise of the frequency. So what will happen though is as a stronger signal or as a signal comes in and gets stronger and you're receiving it more strongly, that noise and that static, that yellow, is going to start to dip down. And as it dips down, you'll start to be able to see those individual elements of the FM signal. Let me show you an example of what that looks like. I'm going to go up to 104.5 where I have a semi-local station. Now, you'll see here that yellow part dipped down into the green. And now you'll see, here's my mono signal down here. There's my pilot. There is the stereo signal. And then here you'll have these two little bumps right here. That's your RDS. And you'll see as soon as I said that, had that coming in, it had a little bit of that pop in. Now let me find a spot here where maybe they were a little weaker. Anyway, um, if I had a little of a weaker signal, you can actually see now there's a little more static that's introduced. The signal is not as loud. You're not going to see those humps here. Now, it has already decoded that, that RDS signal, so it's already locked into that. But if this was a new signal coming in, I'm going to have a harder time getting that RDS decoded. As you can see, static rises, covers up that RDS, and then it lowers down as the signal gets stronger. It lets the RDS poke through. You can see it, and you get a better decode during that time. So if you're ever on a frequency and you're getting a signal and you're like, man, I just need that RDS to come through so I can identify who it is. I had a, a station on 104.3 earlier. It was a French station, possibly from Quebec. Um, I don't know. The station that was in Quebec on frequency had an RDS. I was not getting an RDS decode. I just wasn't seeing it right here. It never got strong enough. The signal never got strong enough so that the RDS could rise above the ambient noise and static on the frequency. So that's why I didn't get an RDS decode. Maybe they were sending it. Maybe they weren't. Maybe if they were sending it, it just wasn't very strong in their overall signal. And so it would take a very, very strong signal from them on my end to be receiving it from my end to be able to have that RDS come through and be able to be decoded, right? So that's just, that's a little visual that I use to help me when I'm especially doing these IQ reviews and I have more time to kind of pay attention to this kind of stuff. Um, if I have a signal coming in, I'll look up there to the top up here at this BF spectrum, and I usually do dock this here. You can put it wherever you want to, but I usually do dock it here um, at the top, right? And then I'll just cut it down so it's just the, the part that I absolutely need here. So I'll usually keep this here at the top above my live signal. That's where I usually dock mine. Um, kind of play with the sizing, how you want it to look and everything. But I will keep that up there so that I can keep an eye on that RDS. Let me restart here again so you can see. When you have a strong signal, this is a local station here, you'll see what it does. Let me go to another one here. This is another local station, semi-local. You can see how far that RDS is sticking out above it, right? Here's another local station. You can see, look at that. I mean, look at your pilot and your mono and your stereo, how strong these are here. And the RDS is sticking up as well. So. These are all local frequency uh, that I have here in the area. Now I'll go to 105.1, which is um, here in the New Orleans area. It's a adjacent channel to an HD signal. So I've got nothing there, right? Um, and you'll see nothing there. So just again, this is just a, another little tool that you can put into your toolbox so that you'll know what's going on while you're doing your reception review, while you're doing your IQ review, while you're live DXing. Uh, whether it's Tropo or eSkip or whatever it might be, to know if you expect to be getting an RDS from that signal that you're receiving, would you even see it? Would it even be there? Is it even in that signal for you to receive? And if it is, you'll be able to see it on the BF Spectrum. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If so, we would love it if you give us a thumbs up and a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so be notified when new videos are available. From all of us here at DX Central, my friends, thank you so much. 73 Best of DX. Let's go back and hit the bands.